Thank you, Patricia. Hi, everyone. I'm Hanovi Schoonover, the Training and Resource Coordinator at Redwind Consulting. Today, we will be discussing walking into worlds, understanding the impact of historical and intergenerational trauma on the Two-Spirit Native LGBTQ community. So presenting today will be Lenny Hayes. Lenny is a member of the, is it pronounced Sisseton? Uh, the Sisseton Wapaton Oyeti of the northeast corner of South Dakota. Lenny is also owner and operator of Tate Topa Consulting, LLC. He has extensive training in mental and chemical health issues that impact the Two-Spirit and LGBTQ community. Lenny has also worked within the Native American community, which includes the American Indian Family Center, St. Paul, Millie Lark's Band of Ojibwe, and was a consultant and therapist with the Little Earth of United Tribes in Minneapolis. And I will now turn it over to him. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, <clears throat> I hope you are all doing well today. Um, so as a Native person, one of the things that we always uh, do is we do an introduction of who we are. So let's get started. Uh, this is who I am. Uh, my name is Lenny Hayes, and I'm from the Sisseton Wapitan Oyati of the northeast corner of South Dakota. I am founder and owner of Tate Toba Consulting. Um, I'm a mental and chemical health therapist specializing in marriage family therapy. Um, I'm an advocate, a mentor, an educator, and motivational speaker. Um, I will get into this more, but I uh, define myself as a male two-spirit. Um, in my language, um, and for my tribe, um, I would be considered a winkta. I am also a survivor of the child sexual, physical, and mental abuse, and I'm also a survivor of the foster care system. So um, I'm going to begin uh, talking about what it means to be two-spirit. Uh, it's a direct translation that comes from the Ojibwe term. Um, what it means is that an individual who identifies as a uh, two-spirit or a native LGBTQ person, it means that that person has a spirit of both a male and female spirit. Um, the term two-spirit came about in 1990 at a third annual intertribal uh, Native American uh, conference in Winnipeg. And so one of the things that um, we need to remember is that when this word came about, um, we have to remember what we have over 560 plus tribes in the United States with over uh, 200 different languages. And so all these individuals came together um, and wanted to come up with one word. And that word was two-spirit. Um, and remember that um, each tribe in the United States has a specific word that they use to identify someone like me who identifies as Two-Spirit. Um, so, so it's really important to remember that. It's a universal um, uh, term that we use across the country. But I'll, I'll talk more about that later also. But there is tribes who do not connect with the term Two-Spirit. Um, so it's also important to remember that because in some tribes, the term Two-Spirit has a different meaning in regards to their culture, uh, their spirituality, and their beliefs within their tribe. Um, so today when we say, uh, when we talk about two-spirit identity, uh, male two-spirits two were considered to be a third gender, and the female two-spirits were considered to be a fourth gender. Um, similar to how we view things today when we talk about lesbians and gay individuals who identify. Um, when a person is given the gift of being two-spirit, it means that that individual has the ability to see the world in two different perspectives. Um, so meaning that a person worth, um, they see the world in a feminine way and also a masculine way. Um, so um, to me, 
I believe that's a, uh, a beautiful gift that's been given to individuals who identify as Two-Spirit. Um, I love this quote by Alex Wilson. Um, she is a individual, she's a female um, from Canada who did a lot of research and a lot of work in regards to um, two-spirit identity. But this is a quote from her when she talks about what it means to be two-spirit. Um, it proclaims a sexuality deeply rooted in our own cultures. Uh, Two-spirit identity affirms the interrelatedness of all aspects of identity, including sexuality, gender, culture, commu uh, community, and spirituality. Um, so with that, um, I'll go much more deeper into two-spirit identity. So research has also told us, um, Will Roscoe was an individual that went into uh, tribal communities to uh, study and to talk with people about two-spirit identity. But what he writes is that um, two-spirit identity has been documented in over 130 tribes um, in every region of North America among every type of native culture. Um, when we talk about two-spirit identity, it's really important to remember that each tribe uh, Genders vary from tribe to tribe, um, but are similar. Um, it has been said that there's um, one tribe that has up to 15 genders uh, uh, to identify two-spirit uh, individuals. Um, most recently, I've talked with several of my colleagues and friends who also do this kind of work. Um, it has been said that in one tribe in the, in the Southwest, there has been up to 40 genders that were identified. Um, it's also important to remember that the two-spirit identity was a concept that was created by Native individuals and should only be used by Native people who identify. So um, what I'm asking people to understand and know is that if you know of someone who is non-Native, um, who calls, them, uh, calls themselves two-spirit, please correct them and let them know that this is a concept that was created only uh, for Native people um, by Native people and should only be used by Native people who identify. Um, one of the things I also talk about, too, is that we do have individuals from across the country who also identify as LGBTQ and or they would only identify as a two person. So, um, when we talk about colonization, so before I uh, began to understand my identity as a two-spirit person, um, what I would often define myself was as a gay male. And for me to get away from that colonized way of thinking, I today will tell people that I identify as a winkta. Um, that was the word that was given to me in my language to my tribe. Second. I identify as a two-spirit male. And lastly, I will define myself as a gay male, um, and it all depends on the, um, the event or the community that I'm within um, that I will call myself a gay male. Often it would be in a setting where um, it may be where I'm amongst more non-Native people. And often, too, I mean, I've come across a lot of places and a, uh, a lot of different situations where often non-Native people will try to call themselves uh, Two-Spirit, and often I've had to put myself in a position to correct them. Uh, for instance, um, I do a lot of work also and have done work in the past in regards to uh, presenting in front of upcoming therapists. Um, there was a situation where one of the upcoming therapists identified as a non-Native lesbian woman. Um, one of the things that she said to me was, why can't I be two-spirit? And during that presentation, I had talked um, and mentioned about three times during that presentation that it's a Native concept that should only be used by Native people. Um, and she just, you know, um, could not get it. Um, and so I wanted to be really respectful to her in regards to how to present 
this to her, since I asked her was, um, do you know the impact of historical and intergenerational trauma on two spirit people or on native people? And she said yes. Um, and I said, so you know that native people have had a lot of things taken away from them. And she said, yes, I understand that. And I said, and you also uh, understand that this was a concept that was created by Native people and should only be used by Native people who identify. Um, and she said, yes. And I said, you can't have it um, because of that reason. And like, again, um, when I had talked with her, I was very respectful um, in helping her to understand that. Uh, what she does today, I, um, but I hope that she understood what I was telling her. So here are some cultural terms to Id identify uh, uh, and gender amongst uh, different tribes. So we have the Crow tribe who has a term that specifically only identifies a male. Um, we have the Navajos, um, and their word not lay, um, uh, identifies both a male and female. Uh, the Lakota people um, would say winkte, um, which identifies a male. Now, remember that the Lakota and Dakota people and the Nakota people come from the Great Sioux Nation. So the only thing that really separates us is the fact that our dialects and language are uh, different. Um, so the Lakota people the word that they have is male, uh, and they use winkta. As a Dakota person, um, I would be considered a winkta, and that's the male word. Um, from my understanding, uh, from talking with a Dakota two-spirit uh, female, there's also a word um, that they use to identify a female. Um, so this slide basically shows you that there's different um, uh, words and language that identifies uh, individuals who identify. So uh, it's really important that when you do some research or if you begin to take a look at two-spirit identity that uh, to remember that each tribe has. The sad part about it is um, one of the things that I've talked about um, last year I went to four different areas in the country and asked each um, uh, a community that I was in or where I was presenting and specifically asked the, the um, question, do you know the word in your language that would identify someone like me? Um, four of these places said no. And so my response to that was, um, and that's the impact of historical trauma on, or one of the uh, aspects of the impact of historical trauma on the Two-Spirit community. Um, so often what happens is that even within tribes, the word is lost in their language. So here are some of the two-spirit uh, community roles that we played uh, before colonization. Um, we were considered healers or medicine people. Um, we were parents of orphan children. Uh, we were conveyors of oral tradition and songs. Uh, we were foretellers of the future. We were name givers of children and adults. Uh, we were nurses during war expeditions. We were potters. We were matchmakers, uh, makers of feather regalia for dances. And we played special roles in the fun dance. Um, currently, right now, I have friends who identify as a wink day or wink da who um, have their own fun dance within their tribal communities. Um, and also, too, you can see that a lot of these, what I've given these uh, community roles come from different tribes. Um, so one of the things that when I talk about my uh, identity as a two-spirit person, one of the things that I talk about um, in the work that I do, so today in modern times, you know, I work with individuals one-on-one -on -one, uh, through therapy sessions. So imagine before colonization, if I was doing the role that I'm doing today, before colonization, I would I would probably be considered a healer or even possibly a medicine person because people would actually come to uh, talk with me. Um, but we do have people who identify today who are a part of ceremony, who are a part of the sweat lodge, who are a part of the Sundance. Um, 
And so they have these roles. Um, so this is just giving you some examples of some community roles that we played in our communities before colonization. So history tells us. So now I'm going to begin to share you some, uh, share with you some pictures of some two-spirit people, our ancestors who were before me, who played parts in your community. Um, so here's Wiwa. Uh, she comes from the Zuni Nation. She was actually an ambassador to Washington, D.C. for her people. Um, she was a political figure. Um, so back then, uh, she was highly respected by her community. Um, so she identified as what we would call today a transgender person. She was male to female. Um, her community loved her. Um, the sad part of her story is that when she went to Washington, D.C., and when the delegates in Washington, D.C. found out that she was actually a male, they shunned her. And here's Hastin Kwa, who comes from the Diné people. Um, he was um, instrumental in a lot of the cultural pieces that he did within his community. He was a potter, um, did many, many cultural things for his community, and he was also highly respected. And here's Pine Leaf Woman. Uh, she comes from the Crow people. I like to talk about her because I just get so fascinated with her. But she would today uh, probably define herself as a lesbian woman. Um, what I like about her was she was actually a chief for her people. Um, she led the men in um, war expeditions. Um, she led the men in um, hunting expeditions. Um, and like I said, she was a chief for her people, um, which is amazing. That's what I love about uh, Pine Leaf Woman. Um, and it, it's also said that she had actually uh, several wives. Um, so. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, too, the impact of issues that impact uh, two-spirit people today. Um, here, we have a picture of two-spirit women. Uh, we have a picture of two-spirit men. And we also have a picture of a, uh, a female-to-male individual. And today, we would uh, define this person as a transgender person. Um, when I talk about the Midwest, um, coming, because I'm originally from South Dakota, um, what saddens me within my own community is that we don't have a lot of history that was written in books, or nor do we have pictures of some of our two-spirit ancestors um, that come from the Midwest. Um, so that really saddens me, because that, you know, that tells me how much of our history was lost due to historical intergenerational trauma. So the question is to ask is, um, what has happened to honor and respect? Um, it is said that um, you know, two-spirit people were treated with the utmost respect and honor within their community. Um, history also tells us that out of the love and respect of our two-spirit people, our chiefs actually hid us to protect us because what was happening was that the Europeans and missionaries were actually coming in and murdering our two-spirit people. Um, so this is a huge impact um, of historical and intergenerational trauma on the uh, two-spirit community. So here are some of the issues that impact the two-spirit LGBT individual and community. Um, one of the two that I really like to talk about is the loss of Native identity and loss of culture. So what is happening is that a lot of the Two-Spirit people who are on the reservations are migrating to the bigger cities, the bigger urban communities, because um, realizing that there is uh, more services that are provided to individuals who identify. But the struggle and challenge is that the LGBTQ organizations really specifically do not know or understand the issues that impact the Two-Spirit Native LGBTQ community. Um, and so a lot of our people who come to the bigger city um, are often um, uh, 
really aren't really clear in, in, in the understanding of their native identity and culture, uh, their identity with culture, because a lot of the tribes, um, what, what is happening, and I actually have friends who come from Minnesota, who have come from South Dakota, who actually come to Minnesota just to sweat and to be a part of ceremony. And what's happening in our tribal communities is that a lot of the, the medicine people aren't allowing individuals who identify to be a part of ceremony, which is really, really sad because we played such a huge part before colonization. Um, and so um, that's the impact of historical and intergenerational trauma. So, you know, you see all these issues that impacts our community, and yes, we do have a lot of similarity when we talk about the whole piece of historical and intergenerational trauma on the Native community, but we also have specific um, issues that really impacts us. Um, I had the pleasure of um, advocating and uh, co-facilitating a two-spirit support group here in Minneapolis. So I got the privilege and the honor to sit amongst a lot of two-spirit people who have identified their struggles and challenges, and a lot of these issues that impacts our community, um, a lot of them talk about not being a part of their communities because of being shunned or being ostracized or bullied because of who they are. Um, so even our own people in tribal communities actually have forgotten how important we were to our people before colonization. Um, a lot of us have suffered from uh, alcohol and drug abuse issues. Some of us have experienced a lot of mental health issues, that which includes depression, suicide, discrimination. Um, one of the things that really um, impacts me is that I did some work for an organization here in uh, Minnesota called the Minnesota Indian Women's Sexual Assault Coalition. They were the first organization here in the Minnesota area um, who specifically wanted to take a look at the violence that has impacted our community. So they asked me if I would be willing to um, uh, bring in individuals who identified as male, uh, female, and also transgender people. And so the whole part of the conversation was to talk about violence, including sexual violence. So when we asked the individuals, there was 15 individuals that came to this focus group. Um, what really saddens me is that 14 out of the 15 individuals who were part of this focus group who identified, um, identified that they were sexually abused as a child and sexually assaulted as an adult and did not report it. Um, so that sort of gives you some idea of the trauma that the individuals who identify as Two-Spirit have been really impacted by. Um, and so one of the things that I also like to talk about with the uh, Two-Spirit support group was we put out a survey, because often sometimes I think this sort of telling people what we think individuals need. And so one of the things that I advocated for when we did the creation of this Two-Spirit support group was we put out a survey, um, and what we wanted to do was to have individuals who identified as either Two-Spirit or Native LGBTQ or both to be a part of the survey, and we asked them specifically, what do you need? How can we help you um, in the creation of this uh, support group? So as a mental health professional, I sort of assume that the people would ask for more mental health services. Um, I was quite surprised and astonished with the statistics. Um, and what the statistics said was that 51% of the individuals who were a part of the survey, um, we actually, there were 77 respondents to the survey. Um, not only did we do the survey in Minnesota, but we did it on a national level also. I know that's a not, not a very big pool, but at least we got some response. But anyway, 51% of the individuals um, who responded requested culture and spirituality. Um, to my amazement, only 23% of the respondents asked for mental health services. Um, 
So as part of the uh, support group, what we did was we actually brought in a male and female who we would consider as medicine people who identified as Two-Spirit or Native LGBTQ. So what we wanted them to do was we wanted them to teach the individuals who were part of this support group, uh, teach them different things about culture and spirituality. One of the things that I advocated for and talked with the uh, Two-Spirit, it was a male and a female, um, because, you know, for us, is that understanding of having balance. So that's why I really wanted a male and female to be a part of the individuals who would teach about culture and spirituality. But I also reminded them that we would have people from different tribes from across the country. And so what I wanted them to do, instead of saying, um, you need to do this or you should do this, what I requested from them was to say, as an example, I am a Lakota person, and this is how I was taught. Because what I didn't want to do is um, for the, um, the um, two-spirit people, or spiritual people who were, who were teaching, um, to be really understanding of the many different tribes that may be involved with this support group. And then often when we use that word, you should, Often, sometimes what that does is it also scares people away. So, and that's what we not wanted to do. We wanted to create a place of support and individuals to be able to talk about their um, issues um, in a good way. We were not a mental health group, but we did um, also state that if a person was looking for support, that I or whoever was uh, my co-facilitator, that we would. Um, uh, uh, do some referrals, or I would also actually meet with the individuals one-on-one -on -one with my experience. So also, too, one of the things that um, I know for a fact that our, our tribal communities don't really have conversation about is the sex and human trafficking. Um, I have been a part of the big Indian Nations Conference presenting, talking about this issue as well as other issues. Um, but I had... Uh, um, uh, several uh, conferences back, I did have a FBI agent from South Dakota who approached me and said, you and I need to talk after she attended my session. And what she said was that we know that there's sex and human trafficking of our youth back and forth from South Dakota uh, to Minnesota, uh, both LGBTQ and two-spirit native LGBTQ individuals. So one of the things that I know that our communities have a really hard time understanding is the fact that this is happening. Um, one of the biggest issues that we experience today also, too, is that the national data in regards to violence or any other issues that impact LGBTQ people, often we are not a part of that data um, because the question is never asked. Is never asked, how do you identify? Do you identify as LGBTQ? Do you identify as Two-Spirit? Or do you uh, identify as Native LGBTQ? So often when maybe they do interview individuals who are Native, who identify, often there's no uh, specific box. And I don't like to say that, but there's no specific box for that individual to identify. So even our own people and even our own communities um, um, don't know that this is exactly happening in our communities. Um, so there's a lot of denial. Um, and so one of the things that I've been advocating on is changing that. Um, when I ask communities or LGBTQ organizations, because um, I've been in contact with a lot of LGBTQ uh, organizations here in Minnesota and also across the country, one of the things that I ask them is, um, when you talk about wanting to be inclusive to the two-spirit community, what does that look like to you? Um, does that mean just add, adding the label to the LGBTQ language that we use today? Or do you truly understand what it means to be two-spirit? Because it goes much deeper than a label. We're talking about culture. We're talking about spirituality. And we're talking about that connection to our Native communities. So with this, um, I just really want to share with you um, uh, some of the issues that really impacts our community. And also, too, I had a conversation with uh, 
a Native person who identifies as Two-Spirit. Uh, and one of the things that she w really wanted me to stress is um, to add promiscuous behavior. Because often when we talk about uh, sex addiction, what happens is that society looks at us as being people who are sexually addicted or it's all about sex when it comes to people who identify as LGBTQ or Two-Spirit. Um, and so uh, there is struggles and challenges uh, in regards to the promiscuous behavior, but also to we do have people who are, uh, who are uh, sex addicted. Um, but we have them in all of our communities, not just, you know, the native LGBTQ or uh, LGBTQ community, but also um, in our heterosexual community. So what the impact of that on the Two-Spirit Native LGBTQ community is that before colonization, we were looked at as being sacred. Um, we were highly respected. And yes, uh, we married within our, our tribal communities. Um, so I don't know if you know, but remember when uh, same-sex marriage was passed across the country? Uh, for me, as a Native male, a two-spirit person, I was happy. I was happy for my friends who identify as LGBTQ. I was maybe only happy for a little while because the realization is that that does not even impact tribal communities. Um, tribal communities are their own sovereign nations. So they get to make the rules and the laws amongst Native communities. So there is, you know, like I said earlier, 560-some-plus tribes. Um, but there's only 35-plus tribes in the country who have actually allowed same-sex marriage. There is, I believe, 13 tribes that have actually banned uh, same-sex marriage. So as a Native person, um, I've been with my partner now for eight years. My tribe doesn't allow same-sex marriage. If I was to marry my partner here in Minnesota, of course it would be honored. But if I was to go home and live amongst my tribe um, with my partner um, and we were married, um, they would not accept my marriage to him. So um, that's a real struggle and huge um, issue for me. Um, so I would never move home if I knew that I couldn't marry my partner and that our marriage would be recognized. So those are a lot of the issues that are, are really impacting our community today. Um, if anyone is interested, there's very little research that's done on two-spirit people or native LGBTQ people. But if anyone is interested, you can actually um, Google, this is called the Honors Project, and this work was done by Dr. Karina Walters. And what she did was she went into the six largest um, urban two-spirit communities from across the country. This is really good data, but this data does not include individuals who identify who are living in tribal communities. So on the left side, uh, that's the two-spirit um, statistics statistics versus the heterosexual. So you can see the huge difference in regards to trauma that's really impacting the community. Um, so again, like I said earlier, this you can go and look at this research and uh, read more into it. But this is only the research that uh, we still use today, even though the first, uh, I believe it was 2010 or maybe 2008, that the actual first report came out. Um, so when I talk with a lot of my colleagues today, one of the things that we have talked about is the fact that um, um, we believe that this data is much more higher. So here are some of um, the things that are also um, impacting is that nearly 80 countries criminalize homosexuality. Um, in in the U.S. alone, 29 states can fire two-spirit LGBTQ people. Um, in the U.S., 34 states can actually fire transgender people. Um, so, and then I talked a little bit about the impact of uh, same-sex marriage in tribal communities. Um, so here are some of the, you know, the, the issues that really impact us. And my hope is that uh, you get a better understanding and that you're willing to do your own research in regards to understanding the community. 
Um, so I know that I, I, I really flew through um, this um, presentation. What I'd like to do is I'd really like to open up with any uh, questions, um, any concerns, or um, so I'm going to open it up. Uh, any of the attendees that are participating today, do you have any questions? Please feel free to ask questions because I like to educate and bring awareness to people who don't understand the two-spirit identity and the issues that impact us. It doesn't look like we have any questions coming in. If you would like to proceed. Okay. Um, so I believe Redwind Consulting will make uh, this presentation available. Um, if anybody needs to contact me or has any questions, please take my information down. Um, I'm willing to answer any questions through email. Um, I do have a website. Um, I do, like I said, do a lot of work across the country. Um, um, advocating um, issues that impact the Two-Spirit Native LGBTQ community. Um, if with that, uh, Hanabi, do you have any questions or any recommendations or anything that you would like to say? Um, so just before I start up closing, um, if you do have any questions, you can put it in the chat, and also uh, you can press the hand raising button up in the top left corner. It looks like someone raising their hand. If you click on that, it will show. There's like there is so much more to learn about two spirit identity. Um, that, you know, we normally can't cover in just an hour webinar. Um, one of the things that I usually um, uh, encourage people to do is that there is a DVD out there called Two Spirits. Um, it's, a, it's an amazing uh, educational tool that I like to use when I do uh, day-long trainings with organizations. Um, it is the story of a Navajo uh, Diné individual who identifies. Um, but what I like about it, too, is it also talks about uh, the Navajo people and how they look at sexuality and gender. Um, and then there's a specific story of our st uh, specific events that have happened in this DVD about um, um, the International Two-Spirit Gathering that's held every year nationally. And so what they did was they interviewed individuals who identify who were part of this uh, uh, Two-Spirit International Gathering. Um, and so that also gives you an understanding of how we look and view sexuality and gender in, um, differently in different tribes. So I really like to encourage people to um, uh, view that DVD. Uh, the issue is that you can't rent a DVD, like on Netflix or any other uh, movie channels, um, you would have to directly contact www.twospirits.org um, to send for the DVD. Um, and also, too, I have on my website some resources that can uh, also help you in understanding uh, the Two-Spirit population. Um, what else would I like to say? Um, so professionally, what uh, I am in private practice. Um, I have worked within Native community. 
I've never worked outside of the community. I was worked for Native organizations, um, but I worked with the whole entire population. But because I know that there's a lot of struggles and challenges with individuals who identify, currently right now, um, being in private practice, I choose to only work with uh, youth and adults who identify. Um, only because I know that often sometimes there's a lot of struggles and challenges in uh, non-native therapists who work with individuals who identify and really understanding the trauma that um, we have experienced um, in our lives. Um, and so, like I said, I, I prefer only to work with um, individuals, both youth and adult, who identify. Um, I do do uh, go across the country and uh, do long day trainings, two day trainings, um, really breaking down um, when we talk about how homophobia and transphobia impacts even our tribal communities. Um, I do some activities, um, and I like to have conversation with people, so I'm not one of those presenters that likes to just stand at a podium and talk. I like to engage conversation um, um, because I want to hear people's thoughts. Um, and I'm not here to judge or um, to critique anybody. Um, what I'm wanting to do is to educate and bring awareness. Um, so with that, um, um, again, if you have any, conversa uh, any questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to contact me. All right. Thank you, Lenny. Uh, before yes. we end the call, we want to let you know about our upcoming webinars, Two-Spirit LGBTQ Policies and Practices Within Your Tribal Transitional Housing Program. And that will be on November 7th of this year. And then after that, we have safety planning through the housing search. And that will be on December 5th of this year. We'd also like to mention that we will be sending out an email link to a survey on today's presentation. Uh, it may be sent out in about a week or so once we have the link set up. So with that said, I'd like to thank our presenter, Lenny, our host, Patricia, from TA to TA, and all of you for joining us. And we hope to see you at our next webinar. Thank you.